Hello everybody, this is Simon with the fourth episode of Let's Play Mega Man 6. We've bested the worst and are in for the standard fare really. Our next stage especially is pretty typical for an MM6 level. It has lots of ways you can tackle it, a few secrets hidden, and we're going to explore them all, don't worry. However, nothing of that amounts to anything. At its core this is a boring run-of-the-mill stage, the details of which are mostly forgettable. And I'm going to make sure that you see lots of it. Already pretty background though. The start of this level is probably the best part because a shootout with those guys while really easy is kind of cool. Also they can surprise you. But I'm prepared and I'm going to bring fists to a gunfight. Seeing as those guys here are pretty dumb this is no problem. We've also got a little special property to them which we're going to see in a few. First of all though, the weapon we got last time. Plant Barrier. I already said that it's really really bad, but the only thing you have to really see about it is the weapon energy consumption. What the fuck man? It takes only 7 uses to deplete it? That's nothing, nothing at all and it's not really good or anything. What it is good for though is showing off that those guys here are coded so that um, they will always have a bullet on screen. So if I make it disappear with the Plant Barrier, then he is going to shoot out another one soon after. A little introduction to yes, this game has got shield attackers too, and uh, certainly somewhat pointless, but um, at least in concept interesting mini boss in form of this match dispenser here. Uh, the way the first one is placed, it's really absolutely no problem to deal with it, and he doesn't have too much health, so it's just a little speed bump, nothing more. A small corridor like this one should cue you in that there is something up and this is an ambush. However, there is a really good way to deal with those guys and it is probably one of the best ways to deal with almost anything in this game. Because the punch is just so good. I mean, those are Mets after all. They're supposed to be invincible to anything except for getting punched. This is just great. Really, I am kind of down on this game. Give me something better, goddamn I miss. But the punch is fun. It is really fun. It's one of the best things here. Whoa. Oh, no, that's a beautiful background. Let's give it animated. But we got something else last time. The jet. Jet is not as fun in my opinion as the punch, but it can really be of great use to you, obviously. You can float this for a long time, as long as the meter on the left holds out and uh, it makes platforming passages that were not supposed uh, for you to have it absolutely trivial. This blind jumper is kind of strange but there is no way you're ever going to fail this challenge. It's just a, a nice little introduction to what the jet is capable of. Its only problem is that its downward movement is momentum based, contrary to everything else in Mega Man because the falling momentum has always been something that was, well, there. So, the arc might be kind of strange at points, but we're playing Mega Man 6. Strange arcs are kind of the main, uh, a main thing in this game. And Fire Blast is still the best weapon. Another one of those? Really? I mean, it's not like this is especially challenging or anything. Uh, oh, whatever. I mean, this one here is at least harder to hit, I guess. So, another choice of paths. By the way, again, sometimes, uh, as with the Buster, the shots of my Flame Blast pierce the enemies and sometimes they don't. Still haven't figured out quite how it works, but I think it's got something to do with how much HP the enemies have. Well, anyway, this block here is really strangely placed because you have to edge forward at on the edge or on the ladder to even hit it. I never did it back in the day, so I never got what is behind it. And it's an amazing little secret. Because this is the only time. Hey bro, the Proto Man shows up. And what do we have here? A little something that's kind of misplaced in the giant box down there. This is the energy balancer. And the energy balancer is one of the best things in this game and simultaneously one of the worst. Because I have to wonder why this thing wasn't there from the start, from the get-go, in every game. It just makes it so that when you have a full special weapon selected, or the buster, 
then if you collect a weapon energy pickup, it will automatically fill up the weapon with the lowest energy. So just to fill up energy, you don't have to switch all the time anymore, which is just fantastic. And I don't really get why this is an optional power-up. It's mm, just convenient. Only convenient. Why don't you let us have it from the start? I don't get it. It's just a pet peeve of mine. I don't like the concept of weapon energy in the first place, because it really it is not that limiting, except when it is so low that you cannot use the weapon at all, like plant barrier. Anyway, boss fight. This guy here has only two attacks, both of which can actually be dodged by sliding at the right time, which should make the fight somewhat trivial, but actually it's one of the hardest fight in this, fights in this game except when he does stupid things like that. But when he jumps around like that and corners you at inopportune moments, um, yeah, it's all about the distance really. Like, like here, I mean, eh, he's not that easy to jump over and um, seeing the attacks coming when he's near you is not that easy. But oh well, I made it. <laughs> Generally, just be ready to slide away from the bit below him when he jumps at you. But anyway, we are going to see more of him, because this is not everything in this stage. As said, uh, we have a few extra paths to explore, and we even got the brown tomahawk to help us. You see, the way this game is set up is that in four of its stages, more or less chosen randomly, there is a little extra path uh, able to be gotten with the readapters, either the punch or the jet one. This one, as you might have noticed, requires the jet. And it's also shown here that, yes, there is something else to be gotten, because there is no symbol here. There are a few more things that will change, apart from the path in this stage. And this is why I'm going to run through this stage fully again. For example, the background color is now different. It's nighttime, or rather, dawn, or dusk, depending on your view going to see why later. Um, another reason for why I'm going to run through the whole stage again, don't worry, not for every future video, is that Silver Tomahawk, which is brown, which you just got, is absolutely perfect for this stage. Its arc is really, really weird. And I mean, more or less, most, most special weapons in this game have a really weird arc, but this one takes the cake. It is almost impossible to consciously hit enemies here. I mean, look at this. How does it fly? Why does it fly that way? I don't get it. And also, this time it pierced, <laughs> for example. Anyway, um, for example, against this Met Dispenser, this is absolutely perfect. And against other things, you're going to curse this weapon. I mean, you could always like learn how to use it, or just use it in close range, but well, then again, what's the point? I'm just not a big fan of it. It deals decent enough damage, but most special weapons in this game do. So, just for its ability to more or less somewhat shoot upwards, I would not take it. Anyway, another nice background coming up. Yeah, this is why I said it's maybe dawn now, because, well, the sun is still in the air. But I wouldn't expect them to change the whole background. I mean, the palette is nice enough, and it is, it is a nice touch. I will give the game that. It is a really interesting detail and I'm a sucker for little little details like that. And um, mm, Weird Arc Central, as said, I mean it's just a matter of timing, but we've got a shield weapon for that. Finally we can use it for something useful. Also, another one of those, maybe, I'm going to give them credit, intentional traps that if you go back for a power-up, the enemy will have respawned. So, Silver Tomahawk again. Because, as I said, this time it didn't pierce. Oh yeah, this guy has exactly like 3 HP or 2? Two? 2? Two? 2, yes, 2, and it deals 2 lines of damage, so it didn't pierce. It's just strange. It's really strange. This is just to um, people who said that, that uh, who were very upset that I said that this, the uh, Mega Buster doesn't pierce anymore. It does, just not against everything. Weird Arc Central again. Okay, that's kind of stupid by me. Anyway, about this stage, as said, it's got not that much going for it. It's just a random assortment of things that don't even fit with the supposedly western theme which we've seen at the start, the um, pistol guys, which would have been really cool. I, I liked that. 
And more of those guys would have been cool, but they aren't there. I don't get it. This is just like this corridor or anything with the completely black background. Is and the, the very disgusting palette, and this is just the same salmon color that irked me back in um, Drillman Stage 2. Yeah. Anyway, I just saw um, energy balance at work. It filled up the weapon with the lowest weapon energy instead of letting the pickup go to waste. And again, this this level is just it's just there. It's a few corridors and a few enemies. I mean, it's it's more or less a standard fare, and you've got those extra paths like here. There we got this random platform, which we're never going to see again until the late, late, late stages. And the second boss door. Yes, the secret this uh, level hides, which we have to explore in order for something, which you're going to see in a few, um, to appear on the weapon, uh, on the Robot Master Select screen, is just beating the boss again. And those guys have nothing changed at all. Still going to run through the full fight this time, and he proves a little bit more of a problem. And as such, just don't get cornered against him. I'm kind of stupid here, but um, yeah. Again, in situations like that, this is where uh, not being able to jump out of slides is really going to hurt you, because it's just a, a question of mobility. Maybe you want to jump immediately after you've slid under him. Maybe you just don't want to slide into him when you're dodging his stuff, but you can't because your mobility is limited. Just something that irks me a bit, you know? But anyway, we've beaten the secret real boss. I mean, the official explanation, I think, is that the other boss was just an um, inferior copy or something, even though they do exactly the same stuff. And we're also going to get the weapon again, which is still brown, and also a beat part. Yes, not with letters, but with parts we get in this game, beat. He's more or less useless in this game too. A few applications which we're going to see, but certainly not the lifesaver against the final boss which he was before. Yes, a B here. Okay, I think I've taken your attention for long enough now. Thank you very much for it, and I'm going to see you later.